there is no uh, one size fits all plan when you're building an online business. You first have to understand, well, what are the variables here? How long uh, is your runway? Um, how many hours per day do you want to be working in the business? Are you building a business that you want to sell? Is it a passion or is it just a means to an end? Are you just wanting to make money? You're listening to The Growth Booth, the show focused on achieving lifestyle freedom through online businesses. Whether you're looking for step-by-step strategies to start building an online business, simple game plans to grow your business, or proven lifestyle freedom frameworks, you are in the right place. Stay tuned and be sure to join the thousands of listeners already in growth mode. Hey, Booth here. Welcome to episode 28 of The Growth Booth, where today we're talking about how you can reverse engineer online success and what are the things that separate the people that succeed online to the people that maybe struggle a bit more to get started or never actually get to see that magic happen from online businesses. And I thought the the very best person that I could bring on to talk about this today is someone who is the CEO of our mastermind, the Blueprint Academy. Uh, which, by the way, if you want to find out more about that, you can do so by going to thegrowthbooth.com forward slash academy. Now, the Blueprint Academy is something that we started in 2014. It's where we've worked uh, individually, uh, one-on-one with entrepreneurs who want to build an online business. And over the past eight years or so, we've seen so many people who have come into that and just done incredibly well. And I think success leaves clues and we've certainly got a few that I think we're going to be able to share with you here today. Now Bethany is the CEO of the Blueprint Academy and she came in in 2020 and really shook things up for for the better uh, and was able to build in a lot of uh, things that she had picked up in the corporate world. Um, Bethany was uh, an executive at um, all over the world in places like Hong Kong, Dubai, Miami, uh, Los Angeles. She's worked on shows such as, um, you know, Disney um, brands, I should say, such as Disney, MTV, Discovery, Game of Thrones, uh, Wolfgang Park, HBO, and uh, has been involved in large entertainment groups like Nickelodeon, uh, Direct TV, Sky TV, and so on. So we've been able to condense, I think, a lot of the ideas from corporate into a way that helps the entrepreneur who wants to get started online. And this is what I really want to hone in on here today and talk about what you can do if you're listening to this, if you're someone that wants to build an online business. What are some of the takeaways? What are some of the things that we've seen have been instrumental in helping people, uh, you know, get to that tipping point where their online business just takes off? So with all of that said, Bethany, thank you so much for, for taking some time out and actually being here today. Thank you, Aiden. It's my pleasure. It's my first podcast ever, so I'm quite excited. There you go. Awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. So, um, look, where do we start here? If, I mean, where do we start when we think about reverse engineering success online? What is it that, that comes to your mind? I think that the first thing um, really that comes to mind is having accountability to yourself. You know, so many people that come into BPA... Uh, want accountability, you know, and at the end of the day, you're accountable for yourself. But there's that transition from especially I can say from my own experience going from corporate, where you it's very clear what your your directions are, the strategies, you've got a boss above you and usually a boss above him. And so there are a lot of deadlines, there's a lot of pressure, and you perform because of the pressure. Then you go into being an entrepreneur and it's either the best thing or the worst thing, but you're your own boss. So, you know, you have to, you have to be responsible for your time and what you're doing with that time. And so, you know, we see a lot of people that are busy, that they're definitely hard workers and they're working hard, just like they did kind of in corporate, but in corporate, you can work hard and still get a paycheck. When you're an entrepreneur, if you're not working on the right things at that time, you're not going to get the results and then you're not going to you're not going to have the, you know, the money or whatever it is that you're looking to do with it. So, it's, so I would say it's, it's that mixture of accountability, but it's really combining that with working in the right areas. And you know, funnily enough, exactly. uh, we always warn people when they do come into the Blueprint Academy, which Bethany just referred to as BPA, in case you're wondering oh, who yeah, that is. Right. <laughs> we, we do warn people that, you know, watch out when you come in because Bethany's going to crack the whip. And not just her, <laughs> but our subject matter experts, our coaches, they're also going to crack the whip. So we do really try yeah. to embrace this um, idea of um, accountability. Um, 
And it's really interesting uh, way to think about that. You know, when you are in a day job and you do have people that you're reporting to, you do have things that you have to do. But the moment you mm. go out on your own, I mean, you've got a thousand different things you can do. Um, <laughs> exactly. you know, where, where do you start? It's, it's overwhelming. Right. Uh, so what comes next? We've established that, you know, we want to have some kind of accountability. Um, we've established that, you know, you need to be focused on the right things. What else mm-hmm. are some of the things that, uh, we can sort of link back to, you know, seeing people who have had success have focused on. I think um, really focusing on one area first. Again, people come in um, and they typically are focused on, let's say, a drop shipping model or uh, Amazon white label. But again, with the academy, we support a lot of different. Uh, streams and so there's this i want to do this and i want to do this and i want to do this and i mean aiden how many calls have we been on when you've said you got to focus on one area you've got to start having the revenue come in in one and then we'll add the other but you know a lot of entrepreneurs and i think you know us also we're a personality and we want to do this and we know we can and you know blah 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 blah. but you got to focus 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 down and keep moving and doing the right directions and again that accountability helps because you're getting the feedback you know that you are moving forward and you've got a scorecard you've got a plan so i think it's hard to um you know ride multiple bicycles at the same time to to drive (laughs) several cars uh to a finish line at the same time time. whereas if you are just sitting in one car and you're heading from east to west and you know what your next milestone is you can really make progress in that direction um anytime we've seen people focus on more than one thing it's just it's just physics i mean you you dilute uh, the amount of energy that you've got you dilute your right. focus and uh, results are always slower i don't think i can think of any case where i've seen someone work on building multiple income streams at once where they've ended up in a better situation than maybe just spending 90 days on the first one exactly. and then pivoting exactly. uh, to the next one we do see that a little bit, though, in, for example, if you're building your own brand on Amazon, mm-hmm. because there's a mm-hmm. lot of sort of waiting around sometimes yeah. there. Hurry up and wait, like when you're shooting commercials and things, same thing. Yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so in that, in that instance, what we've seen is, you know, you might order a batch of 100 products to come from China that have got your brand name on them, so on and so forth. And then you just have to wait 30 days or 60 days. So I think if there is a critical path in building the business that has got some of that hurry up and wait uh, sort of built into it, then that might be the exception. You don't just want to have time when you're sitting there twiddling your thumbs. You want to be working on something, but you don't want to be doing everything uh, all at the same time. So we've spoken about accountability. We've spoken about saying focused. We've spoken about, um, you know, one thing at a time. What else have you seen, Bethany? I'd say, um, and again, it's something that you taught me actually coming into to all of this is just simplicity, keeping it as simple as you possibly can. You know, again, you know, sometimes I talk to, to people and they want to use this uh, scheduling software or this project management, and it's going to take them a week to get everything in there. And it's like, you know what, we run everything with a Google Calendar and Google Sheets, and then it's free. Um, it's fast, it all works together, you know, so it's keeping things as simple as possible. So again, you can focus on what is those critical few. And when you're working on your own, the, it, your time is precious. We don't want you to be working 24 hours a day. We want you to be maximizing the time that you have. So keeping yeah. it simple, I think, is, <laughs> is really yeah. important. Oh, there's a, lot to be, there's a lot to be said for that, especially if you add in that for a lot of people, it's the first time they've gone through building an online business so it must be simple it needs to be simple otherwise it's going to get mm-hmm. lost um in, in the weeds and sort of pulled off off paths i think far too many people overcomplicate and want the most advanced tool and we see examples all the time where you know sometimes you can get by with a much simpler um approach and in the uh, podcast episode that we had last week the growth booth number 27 we were speaking to Melissa about support desks and she explained that the support desks that we, or the support desk that we use in our business is not the one that is the most expensive. It's not the one that's got all the bells and whistles. It's actually one that's a little Mm -hmm. bit simpler. It means that Mm -hmm. we we can run it so much easier and uh, get better results. So I think um, simpling down and just, 
I always keep that acronym in my mind. Keep it simple, stupid. Kiss. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Keep on coming back to that. And I think we've definitely seen that. You know, one of the other things that, that comes to mind is, is just showing up and being present. Mm. And yep. this can be apparent exactly. in different ways. It could be virtual, like tuning in mm-hmm. and actually getting through mm-hmm. the training and getting through the homework. Mm-hmm. It could be mm-hmm. physical. Like in the Blueprint Academy, we run live events as well. And I've always seen a correlation between the people that actually show up to the live events <laughs> exactly. and the people that actually get results. results. And I think part of it is because yeah. you don't want to show up uh, three months later yeah. or six months later after the last event and be in exactly the same place. So exactly, it's a form of accountability, I guess you could say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What else I was going to also add with, yeah, with the simplicity, you know, there's some easy things you can do is just turn off all your notices so that you're not working, you know, and you start, you're getting distractions. So the simplicity is also in your work environment, keeping your desk clean, keeping you know, keeping your mind able to focus because it, everything is clear and simple around you. It sounds a little esoteric, but it's, you know, again, I know it works. No, I'm definitely in that, um, in that camp as well. I'm one of those people that likes to, to make my bed in the morning. Um, yeah, and, exactly. You know, <laughs> me too. Yeah. Uh, so uh, anyway, it's a little bit challenging Clarity. to teach that to my kids. Yeah. That I'm looking forward to the point where they can start making their own darn beds. <laughs> putting their own shoes on and so forth but um, yeah, I think exactly. in, in the world of business um, there's a lot to be to be said for that getting your environment uh, right uh, one of the things that I yeah. often talk about is having a space that's um, specifically for my work so I do have a home yeah. office but I've also got an office yeah. uh, which is you know close to where I live but it's an office yeah. and I yeah. get in there and I know that when I'm in there yeah. I'm in my zone and I can get yeah. creative and uh, I feel like that really helps just breaking out different workspaces. It's, I think it's normal that a lot of people start out, you know, with their laptop on the kitchen table, but as the business yeah. grows, it's better to sort of start defining uh, the environment uh, in which exactly. you, you work as well. Because when you, when you come into that environment, those are the clues around you that it's time to focus on this, it's time to, and if everything's nice and clean, you're not, again, you're not distracted. It's just like if you have a clean pa- piece of paper versus one that's been scribbled all over and you start trying to work on top of the scribbled paper, it's, it's chaos, right? So keep it super simple and clean and keep your environment clean and organized. It's, it's not even just a, sure. a clue, it's actually a trigger. So yeah. you know, when you, <laughs> Probably, when you yeah. establish that environment and it could yeah. be with some background music, could be with a cup of coffee or a glass of wine, mm-hmm. whatever, whatever gets you going. Um, you are then in that environment that is going to help you focus and 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 help you work. And I think there are also different ways to do that. For me, I like to mix it up. Sometimes I'll go and work from a coffee shop, which we have, um, mm-hmm. you know, beautiful cof- coffee culture down here in, in Buenos Aires, Argentina. And I can go in there and listen to some good music and and get a lot of work done. And I've got a lot of noise around me. And then there are other times when I want to be in my my quiet sort of sanctuary right, and, and get right. other things done. So yeah. I think finding what works for you establishing those environments um, and these are all all the things we're talking about here are things that you can layer on top of one another so exactly. if you get one of them great if you get two or three of them great you're going to be right. upping your your chances of of really seeing that magic happen uh, what else have you seen there bethany um plans having a really clear plan so again uh, when when we have members come in, we'll, we will create a plan based on what they want to do. So do they have money to spend on ads? Do they don't have, they don't have money? Okay, we'll do it this way. <clears throat> Excuse me, but they're very clear about next steps. And that way there's action steps on a weekly basis. And then we love that 12 week year plan that you talk about. And so you can have a scorecard and see how you're doing against that. So a lot of times people don't achieve what they want to achieve and they think it's a plan and really it is typically i'd say almost 100 percent lack of action or lack of the correct action so yeah. action 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 and correct as you go but keep taking action yeah take, <laughs> i think it's a really massive, big one take massive action i think also um starting with the end in mind so not everyone has yes. the same objective some people want to build a business that makes them $100,000 per year. Other people want to yeah. build a business that makes them $10 million per year. Other people yeah. are happy with just a couple of thousand dollars a month. So I exactly. think there is no uh, one size fits all plan when you're building an no. online business. You first have to understand, no. well, what are the variables here? How long 
uh, is your runway? Um, how many hours per day do you want to be working in the business? Are you building a business exactly. that you want to sell? Is it a passion or is it just a means to an end? Are you just wanting to make money? And based right. on the answers to those types of questions, your plan exactly. is, is going to be different. But then right. it's one thing to, to create a plan. Everyone loves to make a plan because it, <laughs> it, it sounds good and, and you, you're looking in the exactly. future and saying, oh, look, I'm going to be making $10,000 yeah, a month. That's exactly. Uh, but the action is, you know, that's where the rubber hits the road. And just talking about action, what are some of the things that you've seen that can can help people really move the ball with action? So things I've got that sort of that come to mind are uh, maybe leveraging a team, uh, potentially tapping into other people's infrastructure if they don't have uh, any of that their own yet. And that, that includes things like you know third-party warehouses uh, and stuff. If you're in e-commerce, you don't have to have your own warehouse. There are plenty out there that you can use these days that belong to other people. The same with inspection. You know, We do our own uh, product inspection at our own uh, office and, and warehouse in China. But uh, if you're not part of the Blueprint Academy and you don't have that, there are other third-party services that can do something similar for a cost in right. the likes of China. So right. Right. what have you seen that help people uh, really move the ball with, with regards to action and maybe in terms of you know infrastructure or, or access to people? Any, any ideas there? Um, again, the people that I see that are um, really successful are meeting with our coaches once a week, our subject matter experts. And again, is they have the plan and then they're meeting once a week just to fine tune or... Um, take it to the next level. It's this constant refinement. And if you don't have, you know, a, a coach, like, you know, if you're not part of the, the academy, you can find a friend to do that with. You can find, you know, there's apps that you can join that are accountability apps. There's Facebook groups. I think, you know, the recommendation is partner with somebody and you can help them and they can help you. But a lot of times you're out there, you know, the difference between working in corporate and working as an entrepreneur online is you're by yourself. You know, a lot of times you're just by yourself and that can be good when you want that deep work and you really want to think, but other times it gets a little lonely, right? <laughs> so it's just the reality of having that community, having, you know, the coach work, you know, you can work with a coach, you can work with a friend, but you need that support system. And part of it is the accountability of making sure you're doing what you're doing, but also the flip side of it. And I see this really often when somebody just needs kind of a hug and you know, it's okay. You have been pushing it for eight weeks. Okay. You're not exactly where you want to be, but that's okay. You know, take the day off or take two days off and then they come back, regroup, refresh, and they're not beating themselves up. So you need, you know, get somebody in your corner to, help move you along, but also to help you realize how far you've come, you know? I, th I think um, a couple of things, I wanna come back to partnerships. You mentioned partnerships yeah. uh, a moment yeah. ago, but I like to think of having these experts or coaches around you as sort of like building up a support or a scaffolding framework around yourselves. Yeah. And then it's inevitable that when you're building a business, you're going to go through uh, moments of adversity. I mean, I haven't seen any business yeah. owner that's Built anything significant <laughs> without without having a few rough patches along the exactly. way, and right. I think when you encounter those rough patches, there's always this these two voices that you've got inside of you. One is the voice of reason, and the other is the voice of feeling. And the voice of feeling yeah. always wins. So yeah. you know if you're not if you're not motivated to go to the gym, even if your logical brain says, "Yeah, I should go to the gym," it's right. the it's right. the this voice of feeling that always wins. Right. And it's the same in business, you know. Um, yeah. It's not enough just to, to know what you should be doing. You might just have this feeling inside you that you just don't want to do it one day. And, you know, yeah. you might be battling yeah. against that. And people face that a lot when they are burnt out, uh, overextended, yeah. which is another yeah. one of these reasons why we think, you know, s keep things simple, focus on one yeah. thing at a time. You're less likely exactly. to fall into some Get of the these, these pitfalls yeah. and start yeah. getting in that virtuous cycle of, of uh, nailing wins. So just a couple of thoughts around that. Um, I do want to come back to partnerships though. Um, what mm. have you seen with, um, you know, this, we've worked with a lot of solopreneurs, people who are on their own. We've also worked with um, people who have come in as husband, wife teams or just regular mm -hmm. business partners. Mm -hmm. Any observations uh, around that relating back to 
sort of reverse engineering this online success? You know, we just had a call with a member who uh, he's doing a drop shipping model, making thousands and thousands of dollars a month because he's really good at picking the products and managing a, a team that's uploading and working for him. But on the flip side, he was growing so quickly that he couldn't keep up with all the orders. And so his store was shut down, right? Yeah. And we talked to him about partnering with somebody that is really good on the other side of managing the team, making sure everything's happening, having the financial background. And so they're now probably going to partner together because they can play off of each other's strengths to create a much bigger company. And, you know, their projections are going to be a lot bigger. And honestly, there's a lot of relief, right? There's there, there to your point about feeling, sometimes, you know, what you're, you know, part of, I think the, the people that are successful have some self, self-awareness about what they're really good at and what they're not good about. And if you're not good at, with something, you're not really probably going to get a whole lot better. So you either need to delegate it, find a partner, and keep focusing on your strengths. And when you partner with someone, you're able to really bring your full best game to the partnership. And, you know, there there's more money to be had and I think a whole lot more fun. I think you and Steve are a good example of that. Yeah, I mean, I've seen that um, over and over again, just, just the partnerships. You, you really can't, um, it's hard to mm. quantify how valuable a partnership could be. And you, you always get the question of, right. know, well, who am I going to partner with? What if it doesn't work? It's one of those yeah. things where if you don't dive yeah. into it, maybe you'll never know how good it could be. So there's always some risks, but I think you can mitigate those. In fact, a couple of episodes ago, I want to say oh, yeah. Yeah. the growth booth number yeah, 26, yeah. I interviewed uh, Mike and Rick, yeah, who yeah. are a father, father-son father team mm-hmm. um, and have been with Blueprint Academy for around about five years now. And they built up a you know, multi-million dollar business and sold it for, mm-hmm. for many millions. Uh, and they, I spoke to them about yeah. you know, how did they divide out the different tasks. And that was a good example of working to their strengths where one of them focused on uh, the numbers and the accounting and, and so forth. And the other focused more on operations. and We've seen that um, over and over again. I think also working with a partner uh, yeah. ties into many of the other things that we've spoken about. Like all of a sudden, you do have someone mm-hmm. to be accountable for and you don't want to let the other person down. I think it's also just as important though to make sure that if you've got a partner that you do regularly uh, speak to them, which sounds obvious, but many people get into the trap of you know weeks go by and then all of a sudden the partnership's not as exciting anymore. So if you do go down that path, make sure you are regularly talking um, to someone. Now, if you aren't in a partnership or don't have a partnership, I think you can get a lot of the same benefits by uh, leaning on support and building this sort of scaffolding around you, which is the kind of thing that we do uh, at the Blueprint Academy. So that's a way that you can sort of prop up uh, where you might be weak. Um, in, in terms of you know um, partnerships, um, what else? And, and getting and getting support. So you know you were talking to a little bit earlier about Amazon white label. You know you've decided you want to bring a product to market, but you don't speak Chinese and don't know how to speak to the Chinese. If you're working with a group that can go negotiate for you in Chinese, it saves you time. It saves you the trouble of it and the hassle, and it gets it done. So you know partnering with you know, a group that has their foot in the ground in China or this is what they do, you know, all of that helps. So it's really just, you know, you need to figure out what you need to do. And then there's that four decision tree of you either do it, you delegate it, you delete it, or you defer, defer. I love that. And that's a, that's a, that's a really good test that you can do when you are feeling overwhelmed is you can uh, look at your list and say, okay, you know, which of these are going to move the needle? Which of these is the most important thing for me today? And which of these can I just get off my plate? And how can you get them off your plate? You can use this exact same system. You can uh, defer it, you can delete it, or you can delegate it. I mean, that's how you're going to get it off your plate. Uh, and if it is something that needs to be done by you, then just just do it. So um, I think there's a lot of, a lot of power uh, in that. Now, what if, you know, what if someone feels like, uh, you know, it would, it would be great to be be part of a mastermind, but 
I can't afford it. Or um, there are lots of different excuses that can come up here. And I'm not saying that, that they are uh, unreasonable excuses. They're just reasons that people come up with. So I'd love to be a part of this, but um, you know I can't do it because I can't afford it. Or I would love to be a part of this, but uh, it's not going to be right for me. I've tried these things in the past. Or um, you know I'm on a different time zone. I mean, there could be dozens of different reasons people would come up with. What have you seen um, with people that have maybe come in to the Blueprint Academy, and we can use that as an example because we've got some real real data there, uh, who have been sceptical? Um, I know we've got quite a few people that have fallen into that, I'm thinking about a few of them, who have been sceptical, but that scepticism has sort of changed um, to uh, optimism and then ultimately seeing the seeing the results firsthand. Any, any thoughts around what you would say to people who are worried about jumping in to something like this? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a couple things. One is how much is your time worth? And more online, it's where everything's going. So they've made a decision, but, oh, I can't afford the BPA or I can't afford whatever. It doesn't have to be us. It could be any, any other coaching or any other support system. How much is your time worth, right? So if you just do a simple exercise of taking what you're being paid in your current job per hour, Versus if you get somebody that's going to help you, like let's say, for example, a virtual assistant that are $3 or $4 an hour, right there, you're saving so much of your own time and your dollars a day. And before they know it, they've spent thousands and thousands of dollars where if they were working with somebody, a coach, you can get away with $10 an hour or $1 an hour, whatever that is. So it's a, you know, doing this is it really, it's a shortcut. It's getting you to where you want to go a lot faster and again, most people or a majority of people that come in want to get out of that corporate life, right? So they're looking to use this as to replace their income and they want to get there quickly. And, you know, you can do that on your own. I can save in for myself when I 50 hours, I had young kids at home and then I would come home and work till midnight and I did it for three months, but then you get burned out. I was making money, but I just couldn't do it anymore. So It was very different when I did it again and got a VA, and the VA is working for me 40 hours. I mean, how can I add 40 hours to my day and still see my kids and my husband and, you know, and have a life? So um, I think getting into some sort of group and being very, again, back to what we talked about earlier, very clear about what your outcome is, you almost can't afford not to do it. because we all have 24 hours in the day. That's I think you mentioned a couple of things there that um, bring a few things to mind. One is uh, this idea of a group or expertise that can sort of lay out guide rails for you. Because when you are coming into this world of entrepreneurship, there are so many paths that you can take. And if you take the wrong path, it could take you so much longer. Whereas if you've got guide rails, proven systems, infrastructure that can sort of force you to go in the right direction, then like it or not, you're going to get some uh, results as long as you are taking those small steps forward. I know from my own um, experience, it took me two years of trial and error before my business was finally up and up and running. We always say, you know, two years. Nowadays, I would expect to do what I did in two years and eight weeks uh, because there are coaches out there. There are blueprints. It doesn't have to be us, but it could be, it could be anything. And these... These apply to um, all areas of life as well. It's not just building an online business, but anytime you want to accelerate your results and take a shortcut, one of the best ways to do it is to hire an expert or a coach who can give you uh, what you need to know and make sure that you avoid a lot of the mistakes because a lot of it is not actually about making the right decisions. It's about avoiding um, getting derailed, avoiding those wrong decisions which can completely derail um, a business and and leave you just feeling burnt out and you know um, without knowing where to go next. So um, definitely agree with that. Right, right, exactly. And and it's and that is the um, I think that is the risk is jumping into it full steam and just kind of burning the candle on both ends and then it's it's over. Um, because you can't, you can't, you're, you're exhausted, basically. So it's that consistency and persistence. I think persistence is another key clue with the members that succeed or, you know, people that I've seen su- succeed in, you know, both online and offline businesses. I think um, also uh, understanding that, you know, what is your budget? 
because there are different business models that you can start. Some of them are things that do require a bit of capital up front and others are you know, less capital intensive. And if you come into any kind of a coaching program or any kind of um, online education, business education program, you need to know coming into it, you know, what is your budget? Can you expect uh, to get results in a few months? Or, or what are we talking there? Because once you know that, then you can come into something with confidence. Like if money is tight, for example, but you know that you can expect results in six months and you've got enough money to get you through to six months, then there's probably a fairly high uh, likelihood that you'll actually be able to get results. But if you don't have enough money at all, uh, then you know you, you have to choose which is the right kind of opportunity for you. And I think things like the Blueprint Academy um, and other coaching programs, if you really listen to the information about them, it doesn't take long to realize whether or not they're right for you or they're not right for you. And a lot of that I think is just gut instinct um, and understanding you know, where you wanna to get to and the resources that you've got um, at your, your disposal. Um, I am uh, conscious of the time here. Wondered if you had any last minute tips or maybe want to recap on, on any of the points that we've uh, sort of spoken about um, here. I've got one to kick us off and that is, I think, accountability. That was one of the big ones that you spoke about. You can't do everything on your own. You can't, it's hard to get big results if everything is resting on your shoulders. So accountability, working with the accountability partner of some description. And, and getting a team around you. So, um, and that can be a virtual partner that you meet with regularly. It can be every day for five minutes. You know, like I've seen startups where they meet every morning for 10 minutes and it's just a quick, hey, what are the three things you're gonna get done today? You know, it's just, it's super quick. It's, a, they call it stand up meetings. Uh, you're standing up, so it, it's quick and it's worth the time. So, um, I think, you know, again, just getting that success team around you, even if you, it's just 10 people come in, we start with, you need to get some help. Why didn't I do that six months ago? Or why didn't I do that? Why didn't you make me do that a month? It's like, we have been harping on this, but it's, it is a little slow work. And again, we've got a process and we've got a strategy to shorten that timeline, but you can do it, you know. There's so many resources on Google, you can figure it out. So well, it's, it's, it's actually quite addictive when you start um, outsourcing. I mean, I, I outsource everything from, from travel plans to everything. In fact, um, in the past week, I've hired uh, someone here in Argentina because I wanted to um, establish some regulation around the pool temperature. So we've got an indoor pool in the building I live. And some of my neighbors seem to think it's, it's like a jacuzzi and it should be uh, very, very warm but it's a swimming pool, so it's, it's too hot. So I hired um, a local Argentine to look into uh, regulations and turns out that for that kind of a pool, it's not legally allowed to be above a certain temperature because otherwise it has to have, you know, fall into the regulations of a jacuzzi and a you know, therapeutic kind of uh, healing place. But this is an example of something, I could have done that myself, it probably would have taken me one or two hours, but I was like, you know, I can, I can outsource this for 10 bucks and have it done, and it's gonna be done at a better quality than I could be done, could do, and obviously all in Spanish and everything as well. So uh, anyway, I think, um, you know, once you sort of uh, open the door to uh, outsourcing and getting help, the, the, you, there is so much you can do there to make your life easier and, and more enjoyable. Uh, so that's a big and one. And save you money. Yeah, you know, I was gonna say, you know, we're, you know, you mentioned that we get together as a group we were looking at, should we do it in Vegas again? Should we do it in Florida? Should we do it, you know? So I had the VA take everybody that's going and do airline tickets for all of them so we could look at where we plan to have the next event and which one made the most sense. Yeah. And again, so saved us lots of cash by doing it with the VA that probably costs, yeah. uh, I think she, it probably took her less than 10 hours, so right, for, less than $40 for that. So yeah, it's really good. That's oh, amazing, it's amazing. You know, something else, we didn't, we didn't really go down this path, but I think it's important to have a really strong reason why uh, you're doing business in the first place. I mean, if you, if you really want to re re reverse engineer online success, the people that succeed do have a burning why. They're not just fumbling about, they're not treating it like a hobby because we know that when you treat it like a hobby, you get results that are like a hobby. Uh, so, so that's another one. Um, in, anything else to, to add there, Bethany? 
I, I think the big one just always to remember is your the value of your time. You know, we all have 24 hours. So really, really be um, intentional about how you use it. Um, I was just going to show you two things that I, I love using, which is I've got a little kitchen timer here that, yeah. you know, you can hear it is tick. That, you use, right? you use the, I can hear that. Is that the Pomodoro? Yeah. You use that? Yeah, the Pomodoro. So when you're feeling overwhelmed or you like, oh my God, I have too much, just set it for 25 minutes and you start and, you know, this will go off and I'm like, oh my God, I, I oh, I already got through 25 minutes because you start getting into the flow, but it, it's... It makes it really fun. And the other thing is these little it post-its, really these little one by one inch or two by two inch uh, that my, one of my yeah. early business coaches taught me to just, when I have a thought, when I'm working on something, write it down, date it, and then you just keep them on your, on your pad. At the end of the day, you decide if you're going to delete it, or you're going to just put it on a for later sheet or whatever it is, because again, it's that focus and we do get ideas and it's like, Okay, I'm going to stop working. So get these two things and that'll, that'll improve your business right there, in my opinion. <laughs> I love the post-it idea because it's so easy to be um, derailed from your, your thoughts when something uh, pops up in front of you. So that's a good way just to say that, you know, I'm not going to forget about this, but I'm not going to deal with it right now. I'll put it, put it away right. until later. There's some great quote. We should try, you know, something like, Ideas are like slippery fish. When they're gone, they're hard to get back. Yeah. Right. So you want to capture that idea because it's probably relevant or could be relevant, but you also don't want to keep, you know, yeah. going down the wrong, going, being distracted, yeah. basically. Yeah. yeah. Those rabbit holes are so. dangerous places to, to be. <laughs> yeah, they are. The best of times. <laughs> yeah. All right. You could have been doing the temperature thing for 15, 16 oh, hours. I know. You? I know. Tell me about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, um, this has been fantastic, okay. Bethany. Thank you so yeah, much for um, diving into all of this. I think we've um, we've shared a, a few really good ideas here. And I hope if you're listening to this or watching it on YouTube, you, you find it useful. This is episode number 28 of The Growth Booth. If you head over to thegrowthbooth.com, navigate to episode number 28, you'll be able to find the show notes, different links, and of course, a link to how you can find out about the Blueprint Academy, which is, by the way, going to thegrowthbooth.com forward slash academy. We are, gen generally speaking, we are full to capacity, but we do sort of drip new people in uh, every month or so. So if you go to that page, you will find a survey, most likely, that you will be able to fill out, and then you'll be put in direct contact uh, with Bethany and myself uh, and be able to get you uh, up the waiting list. So um, thank you once again, and we will see you on the next episode. Thanks, guys.